Hi there, this is Leo Bray on behalf of Kristen Olson's Urban Yoga Center in Palm Springs. You can visit us online at urbanyoga.org or Kristen Olson's Urban Yoga Center on Facebook to check out the schedule of what's offered daily, stop by the tip chart to make contributions to support what we do online here. And for those watching on YouTube, you can subscribe to the YouTube channel for us while you're there enjoying videos. Today will be about a 30 minute practice. What we do when no uh, students come for one hour Zoom classes is make these shorter videos so they're available later. When you come to YouTube and you don't have an hour uh, to spend on practicing, you wanna do something shorter. So today I'm doing something new, well, new to our YouTube and Zoom offerings, chair yoga. That's why the mat's rolled up or folded up over there and I'm in a chair. So we'll do about 30 minutes that you can do in a chair. So you could do this on your lunch break at work, or you know maybe you've got knee issues or a sore foot or some other reason for wanting to just stay seated. And there's certainly 30 minutes or more that we can do just staying seated. We'll start the same way in the sense that we find a comfortable stillness and focus on breathing. So sit in a way that's comfortable for you. I recommend a firm chair, and if it's if it bothers you to be on, this is just a wooden chair. If you'd rather have a little cushion under you, of course, you can have a little cushion. But you want something with a back on it, if that works for you. Some people would rather not have the back. So sit in a way that's comfortable for you. Not on something squishy like a sofa, but something supportive. Something that's not going to move around much as you move around, we'll put it that way. So I've chosen the chair with the back. Maybe you'd rather have a stool, whatever is better for you and your body today. Feet planted on the floor is nicely grounding and stabilizing. You can rest your hands on your lap or let them hang, whatever works for you. If it's comfortable to you, close your eyes and just bring your attention to your breath to let it start slowing down and getting deeper. Observing the movements of your breath and the sensations that accompany these movements. Taking in the sensations that come from sitting on your chair, bench, stool, whatever you've chosen to sit on. Contact of your feet on the floor, your legs and your butt, your back touching, if your back is touching the chair. Basically, let's take in whatever sensations are present. So there's the contact with the floor and the furniture, but whatever else is going on. I have a, a fan over here sending fresh air over my body. I hear sounds outside through the open window, a light from above filtering through my closed eyelids. Take in whatever sensations are present for you. And not just these external stimuli, but how does your body feel what's going on inside? Make particular note of anything that doesn't feel so good. There's stiffness, soreness, stuckness. Maybe think of sending your breath to where those sensations are. And keeping any trouble spots you've detected in mind during practice. Remembering, as always, that you can skip or modify any part of practice. In this sense, chair yoga is no different than yoga on the mat. You want to listen to your body throughout and find what's best for you. Let's take three deep cleansing breaths. Breathe in through your nose, breathe out through your mouth with a sighing sound.
If your eyes are closed, let them open up. And let's start here. Let your arms hang at your sides if they're not already. Maybe they were. Start with an adjustment for the shoulders. It's like a skeletal adjustment. So picture your skeleton. Think of moving the bones. Of course, we move the muscles. That's what makes the bones move, which is, it helps these visualizations. Think of moving the bones. Raise your right shoulder towards your ear. Slide it back. Let it down. And then your left shoulder up and back and down. And that's a move maybe, you know, I talked about whether you have a back on your chair or not. I'm gonna slide forward and do that again, because you know what? The back of my chair, they limited how far back I could move with the shoulders. So there we go, do it again. And now I'll scoot back and enjoy the support there once more. Inhale, reach your arms out to the sides parallel to the ground. As you exhale, you could reach for your shoulder blades and hug. Or you could take eagle arms, intertwine your arms, press your hands together. If you take the eagle arms, then reach your elbows and your hands up and forward, moving away from your face and your torso. Inhale to open up again. As you exhale, cross the opposite way. Inhale to open up. Exhale, let your arms come down. Let your chin come down towards your chest. We'll start opening the neck up here. Roll your ear towards your shoulder. And let your head tip back, look up towards the ceiling. On over to the other shoulder. Really take your time. If you feel tightness anywhere in the circle, you could pause at that point and rock back and forth over the tight spot. Let your arms feel heavy and just hang down towards the floor. Sometimes when we think roll the ear towards the shoulder, we lift the shoulder towards the ear and that's gonna have a different effect. Trying to let the arms just be passive. And as I said that, you know, I was catching myself lifting my shoulder and that's why I share that. You finish the next circle, take a few going the other way. So some things we do while we're in the chair there, not much different from how we would do them sitting on the floor. And then some things are more different. Maybe just having your feet planted instead of say, sitting with your legs crossed or kneeling on the floor. Maybe it does affect how your next circles feel. You're grounded in a different way. Different things are engaged and relaxed in the lower body. And it's all connected. What the lower body does affects the upper body. When you finish the next circle, lift your chin and look forward. Inhale, reach your left arm up alongside your ear. Exhale, let your arm drape over your head. We're gonna do some traction for the neck. Gently let the weight of your arm draw your head to the left. And if you want, reach your right arm out. Try to feel where your trapezius is at its longest. That's this muscle here. So with your arm extended out at an angle like this, maybe you can feel the point where if I go higher now, that muscle is shortening. Here it's at its longest. If you raise that right arm, let it hang. Let your neck stay passive and relax. Let your left hand slide across your head and come down to your cheek. Use your arm to lift your head back to the center. Let this arm down. Inhale, raise your right arm. Exhale, let it drape over. Gently, just the weight of the arm, drawing your head to the right. And if you want, extend out through your left fingertips. Imagine you're trying to grab something over here. It's just out of reach. I can feel my arm getting longer. That's what it feels like. 
Let your left arm down. Remember to let your neck stay passive. Let your right hand slide over and slide down and nudge your head back up to center. Bring your hands to rest on your thighs or your knees. And we'll do some seated cow and cat pose. Traditional cow and cat is done on your hands and knees. We'll move in a similar way, leading with the heart and letting that sort of the center part of the spine guide the rest of the movement. Inhale, draw your heart forward, let your head to back. Exhale, draw your heart back, let your head tip forward. Now, if your chair has a back like mine, you might find you're limited by the back of the chair. So I'm scooting forward to do it again. And now as I go back, I can go back further. So this is a pretty deep chair relative to the size of my seat, my butt. <laughs> I can scoop forward and still have my whole butt on the chair and have enough room behind me that now when I draw my heart back on the exhale, my back is not hitting the back of the chair at all. I can go back as far as I want. Opening the back and the neck is our focus today in this short practice. After your next exhale, sit up again. And we'll take a twist. Now, if you have a back on your chair, you can use your arm or your hand on the back of the chair to help you come into the twist, but maybe you don't have a back on your chair. Whether you do or not, the mechanics of the twisting involve the breath. So when we inhale, we think rising. As you inhale, your lungs fill and your spine telescopes up. And as you exhale, we come into the twist, working our way up from the waist through the lower spine, middle spine, upper spine, inviting our bodies to come further into the twist on each exhale, never forcing anything. So I'm gonna bring my hand back here because I like to use the back of my chair. You could just rest your hand on the stool back there on the edge of your seat. Inhale, lengthen up, exhale, twist. Like gently wringing yourself out. And I'm still sitting a distance away from the back of my chair. Maybe you feel better sitting closer to the back of your chair, maybe even touching the back of your chair. So everybody's different and that's all right. Now I'm bringing my opposite hand over to my knee. So if your left hand's behind you, your right hand comes over to your left leg and that too can help encourage deeper twisting again. It's not a forcing, you don't wanna push through any pain. It's okay to gently explore probing against resistance and maybe finding some more openness. I'm back through center. And we'll go the other way. Bring your right hand behind you to the seat or to the back. Left hand to your right leg. Inhale, lengthen up. Exhale, see about twisting some more. And different things can happen too in a chair com compared to doing a seated twist on the ground. For example, I'm on a very smooth wooden chair and I've got these leggings on. So as my lower back twists, my butt is actually rotating in the chair. So it's not a problem. It's just something to observe. It's just a difference. Let yourself unwind and come back to center. And let's take a few cow and cat breaths after our twist. And maybe these cow cat breaths feel different than the ones before we did our twists.
And after your next exhale, sit up tall. I'm gonna scoot back now and enjoy the back of the chair supporting me. You do what's right for you. Put your arms hang at your sides. Inhale, reach your arms out and up. Interlace your fingers overhead. Turn your palms up and reach your palms up. Look up with your hands, lift up your heart. So now my shoulder blades just moved away from the chair as my heart came forward. My feet are pressing more actively to the floor. Inhale to come upright. Exhale, bend to the right. Try to keep both of those cheeks on the chair. Feel the length of both arms. Try not to let this left shoulder curl forward past your ear. Sometimes the arm will start to go like this. We want to keep this back here to more effectively open these nice big muscles in here. Inhale to come upright. Exhale to bend to your left. Try to keep both heels on the ground too as you keep both cheeks on the chair. Inhale to come up. Exhale to let your arms come down. Inhale, out and up. Exhale, hands to your heart. Two more times. Inhale, out and up. Exhale, hands to heart. So drawing a big circle with your hands or like a peace sign, right? We come down through the middle and then out like this. <laughs> okay, I lost count. That's four. That's okay. Let's do a few in the other direction. Inhale, up through center. Exhale, out and down. Inhale. Exhale, we'll do two more so it's the same number. Just cuts, inhale. Exhale, all the times I've done this, it never occurred to me I was drawing a peace sign with my hands. I bet you could do some fun with video editing, making lines where your hands go. Bring your hands to rest on the tops of your thighs. And we're gonna come into a forward fold. Just slide your hands forward, tip your torso, and you can use your arms as much as you want for support. So support your back as much as you need. Maybe you're really gripping your shins or maybe you're just melting forward. Depends on how your back feels, right? So maybe your hands are on your legs, maybe they're on your feet. You can touch the floor if you want. If you have yoga blocks around, you can put blocks on the floor and then you have grounding contact in your hands even if the floor is too far away. Let your neck release, let your head hang. And play around because the practice is an exploration, right? So there's reaching forward more actively, keeping the hands and the arms engaged. There's letting the arms go slack. And you could have your hands right in front or you could bring them out to the sides and let them hang here, see how that feels. Bring your hands forward again. We can do some side stretching here too. Walk your hands to the left. That feels different than the upright side bend. Walk your hands back through center and over to the right. Walk your hands back through center. Back up your legs. Use your arms as much as you want. The more you use your arms, the more you're helping your back. Your arms are stronger than your back. So there's nothing wrong with using your arms to help you lift yourself up. You're still using the back muscles and strengthening them, but you're also supporting them and keeping them safe. So let's sort of put those last two movements together. Inhale, out and up. And then as you exhale, fold forward. Now you can do this or you can bring your hands to your legs. I'm going slowly and carefully here. If your back doesn't feel like doing this, inhale, come back up. You could come down like this. Exhaling, rest your hands on your legs and come down in this supported fashion. So you choose which one of those. Inhale, we come up. Exhale, fold down. 
So maybe you use your arms on your legs in both directions, maybe only in one direction, maybe not in either direction. So we can roll up and down just like this with the hands never leaving the legs. Or we can roll up and still raise the arms overhead, then bring them to the legs and walk forward. So there's a lot of variation. There's always choice, at least when I'm leading the practice. I hope that wherever you practice, whoever you practice with, you exercise choice. Even if, say, the teacher doesn't call it out at the start of practice as a headline, the way I was taught to do, because not everyone does this. But each of us has the power to choose what to do, what to skip, how to modify, And maybe it doesn't seem obvious. You don't need someone's explicit permission to alter a practice, to listen to your body, to find the practice that's best for you. When we come to class, at a glance, we can see that we're all different. So why should all these different bodies, different ages and different shapes, why should they have exactly the same practice? Some sameness is great, some unity. Variety is important as well. So I'm going to do one more cycle without using my arms for assist. And let's come here two hands at prayer, and we'll do a prayer twist, this is called. Now, it's similar to something that we would do in chair pose. So <laughs> instead of chair pose, we're sitting in a chair. It's the original chair pose, right? So keeping your hands centered on your chest, keeping your spine long, inhale, lengthen up, and exhale, twist to the right any amount without losing this alignment. Try to keep your knees lined up with each other, just like if we were in chair pose. And then tip forward from the base of your spine. So depending on where you're at, maybe your elbow goes to the outside of your knee. Mine's not gonna do it today in this version. Whether your elbow comes there or not, maybe you wanna try opening your arms, spread your wings, <clears throat> pardon me. If you open your arms, bring your hands back together at the center of your chest. Inhale, face forward, come through center. Sit back up, exhale, twist to the left. And let your torso tip, hinging at the hips. And if you want, spread your wings. Sometimes we think, oh, I have to get my elbow to the outside of my leg in order to open my arms. No, you don't at all. That's one way to do it. This is another. If your arms are open, bring your hands back to your heart. Inhale, come through center, sit up tall. Exhale, let your hands come down. So we focused a lot on the back and the neck. We don't have to exclusively do back and neck. We can do some things for our legs even without getting up from the chair. And we just do a little bit, just real simple. Caps, we get a lot of tension in our caps sometimes and in our feet, we may not consciously be aware of it. But you can sort of walk in place without even getting up. Lift your left knee, lower it. Lift your right knee and heel, lower it. And then as you lift one, when you let it down, lift the other. You can lift it as high as you want. Check out the sensation in your calf, how much feels good, how much feels helpful. You could also maybe scoot your feet forward, play with lifting 
the toes and the ball of the feet one side at a time. Not as much sensation as the calf raises. You could, as you, you could combine those movements like this. So lift one, the heel on one side, the ball of the foot on the other. And you can do that and get in a greater degree of leg stretching. Other things you might do, you might do a little for your hips. You can cross your legs like this, and then raise that heel and maybe nudge this knee down towards the floor. So this is like a very gentle action in both hips, sort of like a standing pigeon variation. You can spend longer there if you want. I'm mindful of the length of time I said it was gonna do here and not going over it by much maybe. 30-ish minutes, we'll say. We'll do some other chair segments coming up soon and explore more ways we can do this. There are standing things we can do with the aid of the chair. And you can certainly do a full one hour practice with chair yoga. We don't wanna leave out the most important part of any practice, Shavasana, the final integration at the end where we come to a quiet, comfortable position to breathe and integrate the benefits of the preceding practice. So that could be the position you started in. It could be something else. Maybe you're tired of sitting in your chair. Maybe your butt's sore or something. Another way you could use your chair is for some supported inversion. You can stay in your chair if you want with your hands on your lap, but maybe you come down on the floor and put your legs on your chair. You can rest your hands on your body or rest your hands on the floor. One other way that you can use a chair, but we can certainly do a seated Shavasana too. Shavasana doesn't have to be down on the floor. You can put your feet up on another piece of furniture if you've got foot rest or foot stool. And just like we did at the beginning, if you want to, you can close your eyes. You can bring your attention to your breath. And as it did at the start, it will slow down and get deeper. Now, maybe your breath didn't get very fast in this practice, but it will still change as you come to stillness and as you pay attention to it. And just as at the start, you can rest your hands on your lap or let them hang, whatever is comfortable for you. Again, scan your body, feel your contact with the floor, with the chair. Taking in the movements and sensations of the deepening, slowing breath. See if you can detect any tension that you're holding by scanning your body head to toe. Picture your forehead, is there a little wrinkle there? Like you're thinking about something that maybe you can let go and resume thinking about later. Is your jaw relaxed? Are your teeth clenched? Let there be a little space between top and bottom teeth, between top and bottom lip. Think of your shoulders melting down a little further away from your ears.
start to find some even deeper breath. Start to move your fingers and toes, hands and feet, ankles and wrists. Gradually, bigger and bigger movements. You can start to move your arms and legs. Maybe move your head. Wake up the neck from that little break in stillness. If you're on the floor with your legs on the chair, maybe sit yourself up. You could stay lying down if you wanted to, of course. There's always choice at the start, at the end, and all through practice. If you've been lying down, you can gradually make your way up to a seat if you want. And bring your hands up by your heart. And maybe that's like this, or maybe that's like this, holding your heart, soothing yourself. Thank you for sharing in this practice with me today. The light within me sees, honors, and bows to that same light within you. Namaste. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and I will see you next time. Be well.